Every day, farmers seek cost-effective, environmentally friendly solutions to the challenges they face. Through actions big and small, Canadian dairy farmers continue to improve efficiency, protect wildlife, and reduce their environmental footprint. This farm family has found that practices that save them time and money can also be good for the environment and their cows. With their local agro-environmental club, Anita and Rock set up trials in their fields that help control erosion, improve soil fertility and feed quality, and encourage biodiversity. We work a lot with the MAPAC and the Agri-Environmental Club. We like to get involved, to meet people, other farmers who are involved, who have done trials and other interesting things on their farm. We can benefit from the trials and projects they have done and keep improving ourselves. When you get involved, you also get to go to conferences, presentations, organize them, and meet various specialists in different fields. We learn a lot from all those people and can put this knowledge to good use on our farm. It helps us really understand what to do on our farm. When a significant portion of their land was expropriated in the 1960s, the farm was left only with hilly fields. We ended up with a lot of hills. It's not practical to cultivate. But we were also losing the best soil and the most fertile land through erosion. Essentially, you end up with empty fields and you have to keep replacing the nutrients. It's very expensive. By reducing erosion and keeping the soil in place, you also improve the soil fertility. What is eroded ends up polluting the waterways. We don't want to lose these nutrients, so we work to keep them. So they put grass and rock waterways in their fields. They used minimum tillage and conducted various trials to reduce soil losses. Some practices save time and effort too, such as planting a cover crop at the same time they apply nitrogen. We spread ryegrass seed at the same time as we apply nitrogen, so the ryegrass will grow through the corn. When we harvest the corn, there will be good plant cover on the ground to retain the soil. If we get heavy rains this fall or when the snow melts next spring, we'll lose much less soil that way. So here is a hay bind that has been modified to leave wide windrows. For forage on our farm, we use the one-day silage method. The hay is cut in the early morning and left to dry for three or four hours. The hay is then raked and made into round bales. This also helps us deal with increasingly uncertain weather forecasts and to harvest quality forages that lead to higher milk production. Here we have a soybean roaster. It's a machine that cooks the soybeans to make it digestible. It takes 45 minutes to get through the roaster. So it has cooked quite a while to make it digestible for the animals. We keep a reserve inside the barn so that if we ever have a small supply problem, we can make do. Overall, it works very well. Rock brings many years of experience as a machinist to the farm. For Benoit, it's all about the cows. Alain is a budding green thumb with an interest in soils and cropping management. Anita took over the farm from her father. She's an environmentalist at heart with a passion for innovation. Well, is like a cow's rumen. If a cow's rumen is not full, it will not work well. It contains a bunch of microorganisms intended to work together. They need the proper balance to work. The soil is similar. It is a living, breathing entity full of microorganisms that capture the nutrients and provide the life and fertility needed to make crops grow. And if you ruin it, it won't supply all of these benefits and grow a good crop. This is why I believe that we have to work with nature rather than against it, keep as much as nature can provide to us, and just supplement what is needed. 